got your back if you want it. Force Calvary to negotiate with the community with the community in mind. Don't let Calvary deny you the community real education from your past because the political prejudice that trickles down from donors against organized labor. Thank you very much. Guillermo Memeldurgan, California Teachers Association. And why are you here tonight and what are your concerns about what's going on in the school district here in West Contra Costa County? Well, I'm here to show support to not only the teachers, but you know, all the, the working people here in the school district and what these privatizers and um, wealthy individuals are doing to try to take advantage of our school districts and our students to make money and profit from our, you know, our local school system. So that's what I'm here, to show support and solidarity. Well, they say that the only way that uh, low-income kids, African-American, Latino, can get a good education is to go into a charter. Uh, what's your response to that? Well, I think we want to have, um, you know, all students, but particularly Latino and African-American students, be able to attend good schools that are well-resourced with, with teachers that are, you know, supported and having a rich curriculum and, and having, you know, um, enrichment programs of, you know, art, music, PE, et cetera, so that all kids have, you know, a good education and, you know, to improve our public schools and, you know, not all charters are necessarily bad. The ones that had the original vision of parents and teachers working together to have a local community school. But unfortunately, it's been taken over by the privatizers, people that want to make money off our schools. And I'm not in support of, of those um, individuals that are doing that to our schools. But definitely want to have all schools serve all students, you know, in a very, um, like I said, rich and meaningful academic program. So. And the Char California Charter School Association, have they been trying to oppose unionization by teachers and other union staff? Absolutely. Um, that's their whole MO. And trying to cite that, well, charters are supposed to be independent and supposed to be a laboratory of experimenting with new pedagogy and, you know, instructional, um, I guess, um, methods. But um, again, the people who want to make money off our schools, they've seen an opportunity and they've turned sort of the charter um, school experiment into something to make money off our students and our communities. And I don't agree with that. Now, this Ron Beller, I don't know if you're familiar with him, has investments in uh, technology, education technology. You think it's proper for a charter school operator uh, to be investing in uh, this technology uh, for education and then maybe even using it on his students uh, at the school? No, I mean, I think um, part of the problem with um, these um, charter management organizations is that they really don't want to have um, democratically run schools where parents, the community, and other stakeholders have a key say and voice in how the schools run. And they're using, you know, unfortunately, our students 
um, as guinea pigs with these experiments that really um, aren't proven by research that they really are effective in, in teaching you know students and so I definitely don't don't support these individuals and what they're trying to do. Now also the Caliber School they voted uh, Ron Beller and his wife uh, uh, Jennifer Moses to uh, reject the California State Teachers Retirement System, CalSTRS, and bring in a 401k in Social Security. What does that mean for teachers in California that this charter and other charters are uh, refusing to be part of the CalSTRS pension plan? Well, I think it's just a further example of how these um, individuals are trying to undermine, you know, the standards for, for all educators and ultimately students that educators serve um, because all educators deserve to have a, you know, professional, you know, wage and, and benefits so they can focus, you know, on teaching the students. And so all this serves as a downward pressure to bring down, you know, the standards for, you know, for all educators, whether it's a public school or, or a charter school. And I definitely don't support that. We need to be raising standards up for not only educators, but for all working people in our community and our state. So I definitely don't, um, don't support, you know, these types of efforts. Now, one of the other issues is Chamberlain Associates, <clears throat> which is a building uh, company, but they also, uh, the Chamberlain owners have given millions of dollars to Teach for America to the school district and apparently hired non-union contractors, Big D, to build uh, these schools, Aspire and others non-union. What do you think about the developers really getting involved in school elections? Uh, do you think they have an ulterior purpose? Absolutely. I mean, they're you know, um, they have a bottom line. They're, they're seeing, you know, unfortunately our students and our schools as a way to make money, unfortunately. So I don't think they have the interests of our students and our communities in their heart. They're just trying to make money. And so I oppose that. And, and I think, um, you know, these individuals and, you know, like you mentioned, the Charter um, Association, I don't really think that they are thinking of teaching as, you know, sustainable long-term profession. I mean, with these organizations like Teach for America, um, there are some who go on to make teaching a career, but but uh, many, unfortunately, um, the studies uh, bear out, is that they only stay for a couple of years through their commitment and maybe use it as a resume builder to go on to their regular, quote-unquote, career. Um, but that just serves to hurt, you know, our students. We need to have stable, well-trained, well-educated, well-compensated teachers teaching our kids, particularly in, in communities of distress like Richmond and other large urban areas where we need we need the best teachers you know to work with our students not the high turnover and the teachers who really aren't making a commitment to this community and there's been a whole campaign kind of uh, scapegoating teachers blaming teachers saying they shouldn't have tenure and the problem of education in California nationally is, is teachers who's behind this uh, attack on teachers and and what's the purpose of it well, I think some of what you mentioned, you know, the, the charter management organizations, the charter association, um, uh, you know, hedge fund operators, definitely um, the, the wealthy individuals um, who want to have the entire country be union free, you know, the union busters, right to work foundations, um, the politicians who serve them. So I think it's definitely, um, we're seeing it's definitely assault on all working people and their unions. And so all of us need to, you know, band together through our unions, through our community organizations to stand up for the rights of all working people to have a voice in the job, to have a decent, you know, wage and benefits to be able to support a family and to have good schools for our kids. And that takes resources and a re um, allocation of you know our tax dollars away from you know tax cuts for the wealthy and corporations and more towards you know public services in our schools and so that's certainly you know those are the values that I stand for. And the, this election cycle in California, the uh, California Charter Association, Ed Voice, a lot of uh, these foundations are giving millions of dollars apparently to candidates for school boards. Uh, what's is you think that that's proper and what's behind this? Uh, uh, giving a lot of millions of dollars and in intervening in local school board elections. Well, unfortunately, wealthy people, um, especially with the Citizens United and these other recent decisions, um, feel that they have carte blanche to basically buy elections. I don't agree with that. I think that's bad for democracy, both local, state, and federal, and I don't support that at all, and I think we have to really address that. And, you know, of course, um, Bernie Sanders was, you know, addressing that, and I think we have to continue to raise that and, you know, continue this movement to get money out of politics where it's really the communities that are deciding locally and statewide, um, you know, the policies that they want to, to have to better improve, you know, and serve, you know, our communities. So I'm definitely opposed to big money buying elections.